All right, what's poppin', people? Welcome back to Fubble Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are doing oh so well. Welcome to today's video, which is another Daily Chelsea News video. Today's content will bring you free topics, subjects, news stories. I will be talking about Jeremy Vogel's potential return to Chelsea as Chelsea have a buyback clause, Lampard's new striking option, and Christian Pulisic as a number nine, false nine kind of thing, which does actually look like it's something he will be turning to, and the forgotten man that can change Chelsea's fortunes in a bad moment, Ruben Loftus-Cheek is back in serious gym training and he could be a few weeks from returning to the Chelsea squad. Before we get into today's news stories, a quick reminder for you guys to subscribe to Football Therapy if you're new to the channel and remember you should subscribe to Yan Plays for hilarious FIFA gaming content. That link is in the top of the description. Oh, hot. You know what? Let's start with Ruben Loftus Cheek. Rubes has been posting on his social media, him back on the gym, testing that Achilles out, that leg out that was in the cast, the sort of slimmer calf muscle, you know, when you've not used a leg for a while, it withers down. And remember, Loftus Cheek kind of prides himself on being a bit of a tank. But that little withered leg is starting to build up. People have forgotten Ruben under the new Chelsea regime because of the feel good factor of all the loanies coming back and Lampard just generally reinvigorating, like. Willian, Jorginho, Kovacic, etc. But Ruben Loftus Cheek is such an immensely talented and important player to Chelsea Football Club, and I think people have forgotten that. Last season under Maurizio Sarri, he was probably the most important player for Chelsea towards the end of that season, or second most behind Eden Hazard. He scored six goals from open play, the same amount of Paul Pogba, but in just a quarter of the minute. When things aren't going Chelsea's way, Ruben can pick up the ball, drive from midfield, people literally bounce off him, or he can do deft one-twos and drive into the box. And he's a superb finisher. He can cut one into the top corner, he can head one in, he can just drive it low. Man's a beast. Now, the reason why I bring this up is because, yes, he's posted on social, so we know he's not that far away, but if you look at the loss to West Ham that Chelsea endured recently, that's the kind of game that's calling out for Ruben Loftus-Cheek to pick up the ball from midfield and just drive through, combine or literally drive through and score. That's the kind of stuff he was doing under Sarri. When Chelsea try and play this more controlling midfield of say Jorginho, Kante and Kovacic, maybe you drop one of those for Ruben Loftus-Cheek who's very good at looking after the ball but really good at ball progression in an offensive way. Loftus-Cheek's going to be huge for Chelsea. People were talking about it might be difficult for him to get back into the midfield and it may be, but also the guy's versatile. Sure, his best position's left centre mid, but he's played all over the place. Lampard will like that. And remember, Lampard supercharges attacking midfielders. Ruben Loftus-Cheek is going to be absolutely massive for Chelsea this season when he comes back and moving forward. And that's an exciting prospect that Chelsea fans need to be reminded of. Right, before I give you the lowdown on Jeremy Boga and how well he's playing in Italy and how Chelsea have a buyback clause, let's talk about Chelsea strikers. After that dismal performance at home against West Ham, Frank Lampard in a couple of interviews kind of admitted defeat in how it didn't work with Olivier Giroud playing as the nine. No one thinks Giroud's a bad player, he just doesn't fit this vibe. This really only enforces all the stories that he's going to be leaving in January and really for the strikers own good he needs to if he's going to be starting for France in the summer. So where does that leave Chelsea? Even if the ban is lifted in January do they buy a striker? Probably not. But in this game obviously Chelsea reverted to a kind of false nine with Christian Pulisic playing through the middle and although it didn't necessarily work that well in this game this could well be something that Frank Lampard looks to in the future. He kind of implied this is something that they've tried before and they've been working on. And you could kind of understand that with looking how frail Chelsea are when Tammy's not playing. Christian Pulisic is used to occupying central spaces. Remember, he's played a lot as a number 10. And really, in this kind of role, he'd be occupying the same space, if not a couple of yards more forward, trying to interchange with wide forwards and play you know, towards the goal. Now, obviously, Pulisic isn't a big guy, he's not very physical, so it wouldn't be a normal striker, and he's not really like a sort of Roberto Firmino in terms of combining who is the quintessential false nine. Really, Pulisic as a striker would be a little bit more cloak and dagger. We know he can run in behind really, really well, take the ball down and pop a shot off. That's what Frank Lampard will be looking to get him doing 
in this role. Obviously, he is very good at one-touch combinations. Maybe he could drift wide, the midfielders could advance forward into central areas. And this kind of way of playing will be hard for the opposition to pick up and know what the hell's going on. So if it works, that will be interesting. I mean, we know Pulisic's got an eye for goal already, so... Striker Pulisic? Interesting option, right? I have a slight suspicion that's not the first time we'll see Christian Pulisic in the striker role at Chelsea. <laughs> Oh, Alright then, let's talk about Jérémy Bogart, the French kid who plays on the wing. Wait a minute, Chelsea need a new winger, right? That's right, they had this kid. What happened to him? Chelsea sold him. Oh, that sounds familiar. How much did they sell him for? Only four million pounds. Damn, man, Chelsea have done themselves over again. But wait, what? <laughs> Do I keep doing this? Chelsea have a buyback clause! No way! Yes, Chelsea have a buyback clause on the young French winger Jeremy Boga, who they sold for four million pounds to Sassuolo in Italy. Now, people are talking about Jeremy Boga because he put in a wonderful performance against Juventus in their 2-2 draw. Pretty sweet, eh? So is he good? Well, he looked very good at Chelsea. Like, people were talking about, oh, who's, who's the new wingers to come through? Is it Charlie Musonda? Is it Jeremy Bogart? Turns out it was neither. <laughs> I guess ultimately it was Hudson Adoy. But the Frenchman is actually playing quite well this season. He's still only 22 years old, so he's generally a very young player. He's probably got a wealth of experience now going to Italy and playing. And remember, Sassuolo aren't a very good team. They're currently 14th in Serie A, but he has five goal contributions in nine appearances, four goals and one assist. Having over 0.5 goal involvements per game as a winger is very good. That's like a passable top level sort of return for a, a creative player. And he's got that for a bad team in Italy. Obviously that's not quite as much as say Christian Pulisic has got for Chelsea, but if you look at the likes of Willian or other people that can play on the right, you think, well, maybe try and play Boga out there, get more offensive numbers. Certainly he's a young nippy dude who runs about a lot and that might suit Lampard better. Now I bring this up because Chelsea are obviously in for a winger, Pedro's on his way out, he didn't look very good against West Ham. Things are very uncertain with Willian and Chelsea are being linked with big money purchases like Jadon Sancho and of course Wilfried Zaha who I've spoken about on this channel. If Chelsea want a cheap option that, say, the buyback clause for Jeremy Boga, I'm not sure the amount, but we could speculate it's probably not that much at all. A cheap option. If Frank Lampard likes the player profile of Boga, then maybe he'll think, damn, he'll do. Bring him back. We'll spend loads of money on X player. Left back, Ben Chilwell, he's going to cost us 100 million. Just pay it. We'll bring back Boga for 10, 20 million. Happy days. Who knows, maybe even Chelsea go out and buy a top tier striker to challenge Tammy Abraham. Jeremy Bogo would certainly be a good option, maybe a little bit understated. I, it wouldn't be an exciting blockbuster move, but Frank Lampard and Jody Morris, if they have a good look at him and think, he's got what we need in this side at the moment. Maybe they go for him as like a cheap option. Sure, it won't have like the branding and marketing effect of say, Jadon Sancho, and even to a degree Wilfred Zaha, but it may fit the ethos and it might work for the Lampard plan. Either that, or Chelsea buy him back for their 10, 20 million pound buyback clause and try and sell him on and make money on the poor kid. Still a lot hangs in the balance while Chelsea are banned from making transfers, and yes, it'll be a couple of weeks before we hear back from that, and I will keep you posted on football therapy, so make sure you do keep it locked here, you're subscribed, and you've hit the bell notifications icon to keep up with all Chelsea news. So what do you think of the content today? If you've enjoyed the video, please like it, but also get down in the comment section below. I wanna hear your thoughts on everything I've spoken about. Would you play Pulisic as the number nine at times? Would you buy back Jeremy Boga? What do you think about Ruben Loftus-Cheek? Does he just get into this Chelsea side every single time? Let me know, get down in the comments below, and also a reminder to you guys to watch more content featuring yours truly. Please do subscribe to Yan Plays. The link is in the top of the description. Go check it out. There's actually daily videos on that channel too. Remember, you can follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. Come follow me on Instagram, guys. No one follows me on Instagram. Come follow me on Instagram, at Football Yannick. <laughs> That's it from me, everyone. You lot over there, enjoy the football, and I will see you later. Football therapy subscribers and viewers, it is I, Yann, <laughs> talking to you from my office in the post-editing phase. Listen, this is a quick plug and message and reminder to you guys. Do go and subscribe to my second channel, Yann Plays. 
It's loads of fun. Even if you're not a Chelsea fan, I play FIFA. I'm going to play different games too. But at the moment, I'm playing FIFA 20 Chelsea career mode. It's loads of fun. It's really interactive. I'm getting all your guys' information from the comments and basically playing like that. So do come check it out and subscribe. All right, cheers. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'm going to get it how I'm living. I'm going to walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I let me baby